You may think you're looking at a red and white koi, a kohaku, but in reality, it may be something else. Watch Mickey fall into a bowl. No, I don't think so. So in this bowl, we've got five fish. Yeah! And they all have the, what we would call red and white colors for koi. Yep. But if you look really closely, they're all actually different varieties. Yeah. The only one that's actually a kohaku is this one. So what makes a variety a variety? A kohaku is what we would call a, a wagoi, which, you know, it's just a regular, a regular Scaled koi. fish, yeah. Regular scaled fish. It has, it has scales. Mm -hmm. And you could see the fins. The fins are, are translucent. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, this fish, it has scales. And if you look at the fins, it's translucent. You can see through them. Yep. A variation of this variety is the Ginrin Kohaku. And that's this guy, right here. And what makes it Ginrin is these shiny, sparkly scales. Yeah. Some koi, some koi may have shiny, sparkly scales, like one or two. But for a koi to be considered ginrin, it has to have a full row of scales. It should be from basically the lateral line, which is the midsection of the fish, up and around to the other lateral line, should be shiny ginrin scales. Should have that shiny glimmery scales. Glimmery scales. Sometimes it goes down to the bottom, but what's important is it has it on the top part. Top half of the fish. Top yeah. half of the fish. A third variation of this, of the regular kohaku, is the Deutz Kohaku. Deutz is the Japanese term for German and it refers to German carp. Well, German carp typically have no scales in their body. Mm -hmm. And this is the Japanese version of the German carp. Yep. As you can see, there are scales here and there, like especially along the uh, dorsal fin. They can be sometimes down along the lateral line but not always the case. Like this one's relatively scale free throughout the whole midsection. Just some here and there, towards there and along the lateral line. Yeah, so it doesn't necessarily mean scaleless. It yeah, means it's not quite completely scaleless, but for the most part, lacking scales. I think that's one of the misnomers too, like the, one of the myths or, or yeah. the misunderstandings of koi. Mm -hmm. When you have a Deutz fish, it's typically understood as a scaleless fish, but it literally refers to a, a German carp. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be completely 100% scale free, mm -hmm. but at least 50%, in reality 90% of the fish is Yeah, basically scale -free. it doesn't have the same scalation that you would find in a wagoi, because you'll even find examples like armor scales, mm -hmm. which I would consider those scaleless as well, just because they have big mismatched scales all throughout the body that doesn't give you the impression of a typical scaled fish, but it's just a weird looking, almost looks like a turtle. So now, we kind of digress from the kohaku in that there are fish that have, appear to have the same red and white colors, but are actually not kohaku at all. Mm -hmm. And most of them fall under a class that are called hikari, or metallic fish. Uh, one of the easiest ways to spot if a koi is a hikari or, or a metallic fish is by looking at the fins. Yeah. And what you'll see when you look at the fins on metallic fish is that they're opaque. You can't see through them. Exactly. Yep. That's one of the most de defining factors of metallic fish is the, the opaque fins. And the easiest way really to say if it's a metallic fish or not. Yeah. Other characteristics of metallic fish are uh, the skin. It really refers to the skin. Yeah. The skin being having that metallic sheen, looking a little bit like. Compare these two side to side. It's just like uh, with paint, paint finishes. Metallic's like reflective, whereas this is more of a, a glossy or a matte finish on a regular kwaku. The metallic fish 
is reflective and shiny. So it's easy to compare side by side. Exactly. So with a metallic fish that looks like a kohaku with the red and white pattern, it's, it's a really interesting name and it, it is not, it's not hikari kohaku. This, this variety is actually called sakura okan. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful name for it this is. fish. Yeah. And it is characterized by having the red and white colors, having scales, and being metallic. Yeah. And the last, I guess, variation of the red and white fish that we have mm -hmm. is the red and white metallic doits fish. Yep. That would be this one here. This is a kikase. So as you can see, it scales. may not have scales, but you could still see the metallic like quality, mm -hmm. uh, especially apparent if you put it right next to the doit fish. Even the fins are you opaque. You could see as the, well. the, the opaque fins. Let's compare. Doits kohaku. When you put it next to the doits kohaku, you'll see it's very obvious side by side the how one of them has a metallic quality and the other one has a very just matte glossy matte finish. Gloss. Yeah. And even something too, a lot of people will get mixed up will be like Ginrin versus metallic because as you can see side by side here. Whereas you have individual shiny scales here on the Ginrin and the metallic itself is just reflective and shiny. Yeah, Another easy way to tell the difference is the head on a Ginrin koi is exactly the same as a regular Kohaku or a non-metallic fish. Very interesting. Yeah. So many koi that look like the same koi but on first glance, but the closer you look, you realize there's these subtle differences that make them completely different varieties. Exactly. Yeah, honestly, it, it's, it doesn't really doesn't really matter whether you know the names or not or, or whatnot, but it is interesting to note how they're actually quite different. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people don't see very often is the metallic versus the wagoi. Yeah. Until you're pointed out, then you notice the fins. The fins are the most obvious one at mm -hmm. first, and then you look at the, yeah. the skin, then you can really see it's the difference. that it's, it's a huge difference. So that's about it, huh? Yep. Um, we'll see you next time. Ah, don't send a man to do a woman's job. Ouch. Mm. At least I'm still a man in her book.